Hello, it is Monday Fun Day, and on Monday Fun Day, I get to talk about whatever I want. And what I want to talk about is, of course, world building for my uh, webtoon that is in pre production, pre 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 production called Crow Story. And Crow Story, it's about elves. But last week, we talked about centaurs, and I promised that I would finish up talking about Mistfall. And I realized I don't have tons to talk about, which is good because last week went on forever. So before we get into this, please like and leave some sort of comment, even if it's just a little heart. I appreciate it very much. And yeah, check out the comic that's being drawn here. It's probably out on Webtoons, but it is 100% out in book form. And I love it, and it's got beautiful watercolor illustrations, and there's also an audiobook form if you want to hear that. Yeah, Mistfall, let's talk. Uh, so we are coming so close to finishing. We have like two more provinces after this, and I think I can just do them together next week. And that means after this, we get to talk about another kingdom. So we've been talking about the divine kingdom of the Lindworm for weeks, months I guess actually, and yeah we're finally about to leave and I want to know whether or not we want to go south or north. If we go south after this we go into the Duchy of Hazel and the Duchy of Thane, which are kind of vassal states for the Lindworm kingdom. So they're going to be very similar to what we've been talking about already. Or we can go north to the Sylvan Forest, which is uh, free land, which will be a lot more similar to our talks about uh, Mythfield and uh, Feymouth. Either or, I'm excited to talk about those in the future. We're going to quickly talk about Mistfall today. Mistfall is where the centaurs live. That's the most important part about it, and we talked about the centaurs last time. Uh, they once thrived there, especially in the equatorial region, and it was very hot. I mean, it remains hot and dry. The centaurs there, especially the witches, the numbers have dwindled incredibly um, since the Plague of Lilies, which I have talked so much about. If you watch the playlist at all, you will learn all about the Plague of Lilies. We're just having an easy week this week, I guess. So Mistfall is a region that's similar to like um, Frostrus and Feymouth in that it is more of like a territory um, and it is controlled by various lords and it is similar to Mythfield in that there are a lot of different religious groups, and it is very much a project. <laughs> it is a project right now, and it has a lot in common with the duchies as well, because it is very close there, and it has like a lot of different hearth religions in it, and hearth is like one of the twelve elements in this world. And like, as of recently, there's been like this plague that's wiped out so many people within Mistfall. And because of this, a lot of ground is being seized, I guess. Like it's in it's in a state of recovery now, but it's very much going to break apart soon and become more defined provinces um, controlled by like higher status lords and they're gonna kind of work on bringing the the population up to speed on the whole lindworm thing get get them to embrace that so some of like the religious makeup of mistfall is hazalian faith so hazalian faith is like this belief that the steward um so like this goddess was reincarnated and became a duchess of the Duchy of Hazel. So there's a lot of people that hold Hazalian beliefs. There's also um, the centaurs, of course. There's centaur beliefs. 
there's centaur witchcraft and that is kind of like exclusive to this area and then there's like ancient hearth traditions and i'm not sure if i've talked about ancient hearth traditions no i haven't however i'm probably gonna talk about them if we talk about either like uh the duchies later because it's more prominent there but regardless there's ancient hearth traditions there's also the druids that exist there there's there's still some like in the further like um northern region there's interactions with like the druids so there's a very small population of druids that falls under like the uh the land of of mistfall and there are also the central hearth witches and those were did i ever talk about the central hearth witches i didn't oh okay so there are the central hearth witches that exist there and i guess we'll talk about those because i haven't brought up those so we're, we're gonna have some witch talk yeah so there's like a lot of like centaurs which is a lot of I don't want to say drama like so like the major kingdom well the kingdom that's like taken over this land they believe in this thing called the lindworm orthodoxy which is a belief in this worm god that ate 12 other gods and merged the elements together to create the world it's the whole thing and they really want you to believe and worship in the lindworm so they have a lot of issues with people that they consider to be witches and so centaur witchcraft ancient hearth traditions the druid traditions all of these are very witchcrafty in their mind they're like okay with hazalian faith um out of all of these like it's the most okay but there's also a significant population, especially for witches, like it's a, it's a significant population of central hearth witches. And I think that's what we're going to talk about today, because I didn't realize I hadn't talked about this. So there's some amount of crossover with central hearth witches and centaur beliefs, but they're not very explicit. They worship Hazel, um, the steward, or like the goddess that the worm ate. Um, and that's the element of hearth, which is like home and family. And they sometimes call her a chel um, because there are populations of central hearth witches that speak like the centaur language. And that's sort of the name for the goddess is a chel. And so like there's some like crossover in that, but a lot of like their core beliefs are kind of different so like most forms of witchcraft um central hearth witches kind of dedicate themselves to like the worship of a steward and they believe that the world was created by the 12 gods and goddesses so they they have a lot more in common with like the lindworm orthodoxy than like other witches do so they believe that the world was created by the 12 gods and goddesses so they made the world and the world they made it was like pulsing with life and it pulsed with so much life that a serpent hatched out of the earth and this serpent is called the lindworm and sometimes it is referred to as lechfang within like people who speak like the centaur language however less referred to as lechfang because that has a lot more like negative connotations but but still sometimes anyways so lechfang attacked the gods and the 12 gods used their power to stop the lindworm and they sealed it and themselves in the earth so they don't believe in like the the eating thing they don't believe that the lindworm ate all of the gods um, they believe that they were all sealed away together within the earth. And crystal, um, aether crystal, so like um, in this world, magic sometimes forms in like these really dense quantities of magic uh, called like aether crystals. And so like aether crystal is believed to be the scales of the lindworm showing through the earth. Um, and the lindworm offers powerful magic to mages of the world. 
and it does this hoping that it can somehow like free itself through them. It is thought that like all people in the world are actually animals at their core, and this belief kind of stems from like an actual thing, like a, a confirmed thing in this world um, by me, where everyone exists on a continuum between an elf and a animal, and elves are mages basically, and then there is like there there's twelve different elemental powers and each elemental power is associated with an animal and everyone um, exists on a spectrum between those so in central hearth witchcraft um, it is believed that everyone came from animals and that to look like an elf it is a sign of the lindworm's influence and the reason like that kind of checks out is because magic in this world and looking like an elf is less determined by like lineage and more determined by like environmental factors. Um, so being exposed to things like aether crystal can cause you to be born or grow up into a mage um, rather than something like a fawn or a centaur. So, central witchcraft does not believe that one is to blame whether or not they are born as a mage or not. However, mages within this belief are expected to reject the gifts of the Lindworm and abstain from the use of magic. Um, central hearth witches predominantly dedicate themselves to Hazel or Echel, and and that is like one of like the gods, right? And that said, it is not explicitly like the only goddess you're allowed to worship, right? Um, but one is expected to kind of pick a god, and usually one will pick like a god that they share the element with, like whatever god created their element that they're associated with, that's who they follow, but that's like not required either. It's it's whichever one you're kind of drawn to. And witchcraft is practiced by creating like a space of worship, typically like a hearth, but mages will often create like more private spaces, often like a garden, and warding spells are created to kind of keep the lindworm away. And and like the reason for this and, and the reason why warding spells are okay, so like magic, hearth magic in particular, which is like the most common element in this area, is created through um, keeping a hearth, which is like a heart of a family, and it's very easy to create magic with hearth magic. And so mages are kind of expected to kind of abstain from creating something like a hearth because it is drawing on the power of Lechfang to do so. And so warding spells um, are instead more of like a witchcraft thing. They're, they come from like alchemy where magic is able to be like dispelled and it's called like abjuration. And so like these spells are typically like um, sigils and things. These sigils again, are alchemic, um, so it's best for mages to not do them, and they are usually instead um, made by non-mages. And non-mages are taught skills through, like, apprenticeships to become, like, witches that create wards. And wards kind of, like, purify things. So, like, within hearth magic there's these things that are like enchanted objects and like it just happens as mag as magic builds within a household and like your chair and your chairs might like set themselves or like your brooms will like sweep the floor for you i i went all into it but like through abjuration like one can purify enchanted objects like within this um, belief system, this religion, um, within these practices, 
um, enchanted objects, regardless of like how helpful they are, are seen as being like um, cursed and sort of like temptations from the 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 lindworm. So purifying objects of enchantments is seen as very important and wards are also kind of made to help stop children from like developing magical powers and it is is very common for so like these creators of wards and like the elders and like the the well-trained witches develop a lot of skill in disrupting magic um they 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 have a lot of like their own like alchemy that they have derived over many years and so it's it's common for like there to be like rituals where like sigils and are like painted or tattooed onto mages to dispel their magic and stop them from being able to use their power um inadvertently however <sighs> Confusingly, they also practice their own form of magic. So, like, aside from, like, those who would specialize in learning how to, like, control the magic of mages, there are witches that learn to create something similar to magic through prayer and admiration of the god. So, like, those who don't have the excess magic that a mage would, someone like a fawn, would pray to Hazel and there are lots of like rituals and other prayers and things that end up having kind of magical results and like one of like the most common one is like a ritual pitcher that is made and it is made to never empty of of cream and it it's only can really be used in rituals and rites and like healing and things things and it's used to make sort of like celebratory like cakes and things that provide good luck on certain situations but like you wouldn't want to like misuse these things because they're like created by like the goddess Achel so you don't want to mess with that right and other than that so like Mistfall is just of course not great to these um, witches and they have of course suffered from the plague of lilies but I haven't written anything horrible happening to them so we're just gonna have a little peaceful time and just leave them to eat their cakes so yeah I'm gonna leave this kind of short thank you for listening I love that you listen please leave a comment down below we have one more week um, and then I need to decide where we go next. So leave a comment, please. And thank you. All right. Goodbye.